classification of the singular trees yeah so today we will uh, continue uh, with this uh, same concept the singular trees and also give uh, various type of singular tree concept for the various type of singular tree and then uh, go for the residue theorem that will be used to evaluate the sum of the real integrals uh, which may be in the form of minus infinity infinity f x dx and so on so forth. So, today we will try to cover up this thing because this may be the last lecture today for this. So, as we have discussed the singularity we have defined as we call a point z naught or a function f z a function f z uh, is a singular uh, a function f z has singularity at a point z naught if f of z f z if f of f z is not analytic is not analytic at z naught that is ceased to be analytic, but every neighborhood of z naught every neighborhood z naught contains point contains points at which f is analytic analytic that is the meaning is if suppose we say z naught is a singular point for a function f z it means at the point z naught the function ceases to be analytic either it is not defined or is not at all analytic and but if we draw any neighborhood around the point z naught then this must include some of the point or maybe all also where the function should be analytic if there exist a neighborhood of the z naught which is free from any other singular point except z naught itself then such a point z naught is called an isolated singular point. So, we call the point z z naught as an isolated singular point isolated singular point. Uh, of f z if z equal to z naught has a neighborhood has a neighborhood without further singularities of f z of f z. It means there exists some neighborhood there exists a neighborhood of a point z naught with a suitable radius delta naught such that this neighborhood is free from the singular point of a z uh, except z means function is an is analytic everywhere in this neighborhood except at z naught. So, at all other point f is analytic f is analytic at all points all points z belonging to n delta z naught except at z naught which is a singular point except z naught which is a singular point of f z then z naught is called an isolated singular point an example we have seen that if we take the function f z which is ten of z then obviously, this function has a singularity where cosine of z is 0 it means z must be odd multiple of pi by 2 like this. So, these are the singular points of this and each one is an isolated singular point because there is a sufficient gap between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 pi by 2 3 pi by 2. So, one can obtain the neighborhood with the suitable radius which does not include the other singularity except the point itself. 
However, if we look the function f z which is tan of 1 by z, then it has a singular point the singularities of this will be all the singularities will be where the cos of 1 by z is 0. It means 1 by z must be the odd multiple of pi by 2 all these that is that is 2 n plus 1 uh, odd uh, multiple of pi by 2 is it not. So, that is all uh, n is 1 n is 0 n is 1 n is 2 n is 3 and so on. Now, z becomes what z is 2 over 2 n plus 1 pi. So, these are the singular points these are the singular points of this. Now, when you <laughs> take the limit of this. So, what is the limiting position of this limit of this as n tends to infinity this limit is 0. Now, if we look the 0 this is our 0 here these are the sequence of the points these are the sequence of the points which are tending to 0. So, if we draw any neighborhood around the point 0 then you will get at least one of the point at least some point of the type of these 2 over 2 n plus 1 pi will be available will be available is it not uh, like this. So, will be available for this it means 0 is not an isolated singular point. So, here 0 is a non isolated singular point for the function f z which is 10 of 1 by z. So, this is the difference we are interested in a isolated singular point and if the function has an isolated singular point then we can classify a um, uh, we can classify by means of the Lorentz series. Okay. So, classification of the singular points. singular points. Let us suppose let z equal to z naught be an isolated singular point of the function f z. So, we can expand it. So, we can expand this function x f z in the form of Rowan series in the neighborhood in the analysis 0 less than mod z minus z naught is less than say r where r is the radius of this analysis uh, means outer circle where uh, the singularity all the similarity other than this z naught will lie outside it. So, th this is our z naught point and here if I just remove it with a small portion say delta this is our delta this radius then we get this sulk analysis 0 less than mod z minus z naught less than r. In this analysis the function f is analytic so, it can be expressed in the form of the Rowan series as follows. So, we get the f of z as 0 to infinity a n z minus z naught to the power n sigma n is 1 to infinity b n over z minus z naught to the power n, where a n and b n if you remember this can be defined by means of the formula h uh, a n s are uh, 1 upon 2 pi i 2 pi i integral c c f z star over z star minus z naught to the power n plus 1 d z star and b n s are defined to be uh, like b n s we can write it minus n plus 1 uh, b n s. 
we can write 1 upon 2 pi i integral over c f z star over z star minus z naught minus n plus 1 d z star that is a single formula we can write it in this fashion n. So, b 1 is nothing but what when n is 1 it is nothing but uh, f z star over z star minus 1 uh, n is 1. Okay. So, b 1 will be integral of f z d z. So, this is what we get. Okay. <laughs> now, if we look this series 1 then it consists of two parts one is the uh, integral positive integral powers of z minus z naught other with the negative integral power of z minus z naught. The first one will be represents analytic function it is a power series. The second one it is known as the principal part of the function f z of this series. Okay. Now, the singularity z equal to z naught is a singular point. So, the characterization or classification of the singularity depends on the terms available in the second part. If there are finite number of terms available in the second part, then we say z naught has a pole and the order of the four is the number of the terms available in the second part. If there are infinite number of the terms available in the second part of this expansion, then z naught will be an essential singular point. So, we say uh, we uh, define like this, uh, if the principal part principal part that is second portion second part of it in one in one uh, contains only finitely finitely many terms finitely many terms say v 1 over z minus z naught plus b 2 over z minus z naught whole square b, uh, n is 1 n is 2 and say b m over z minus z naught to the power m. Then the function f z uh, has the singularity h then the function f z uh, which has a, uh, then the function is set to have is set to have a pole of order m at the point z equal to z naught means this single point will be a pole of order m if the negative powers of z minus z naught in that series having only m terms then it is of order m. Now, on the other hand if the principal part of 1 part of the uh, series 1 that is the second part of series 1 contains infinitely many terms. infinitely uh, many terms. Then we say the function f z has at z equal to z naught an essential singularity and an isolated essential singularity. essential singularity singularity okay <coughs> for example if we just look the function f z which is e to the power 1 by z now this function has an expansion which is 0 to infinity 1 by factorial n into 1 by z to the power n that is it has it uh, expansion as 1 plus 1 by z plus 1 by factorial 2 z square and so on like this 1 by. So, 
it does not have a positive powers only one term is there constant terms and rest are zeros. So, uh, the negative parts contains infinitely many terms. So, z equal to 0 is an essential singular point for this. Similarly, when we get sin 1 by z, we get the similar term. If we take the function f z, say uh, uh, 1 by z cube minus z 5, say, then in that case, uh, it is equal to what 1 by z cube, then 1 minus z square, is it not? And then when we expand it in the form of the series 1 by z cube, 1 minus z square inverse, we get 1 by z cube, 1 plus z square plus z 4 and so on in the circle mod z when less than 1. And in that case, we are getting 1 by z cube plus 1 by z plus z and so on. So, basically these are only two terms z equal to 0 will be a pole but there are three terms because z square term is missing. So, z equal to 0 is a pole because it is uh, uh, the first term if you remember b 1 by z minus z naught. So, that is available 1 by b 2 is missing b 2 is 0 b 3 is z cube. So, is a pole of order 3 4 of order 3 like this similarly one can get. Now, if we see here the difference between the essential singularity and the pole is that if z naught is an isolated singularity, you write down the expansion of the function in the form of Lorentz series and that in the negative part of it that is the principal part of it will decide about the nature of the singularity whether it is a pole or it is an essential singularity. But someone may think like this because in pole also the terms are uh, though it is finite, but the z minus z naught lies in the denominator. So, when z approach to z naught it goes to infinity. Same case is with here also z all the terms are lying in the denominator. So, one can think that both are tending to infinity when z is tending to z naught. The answer is not satisfactory. Why? The behavior of the function in the neighborhood of the pole and in the neighborhood of the essential singularity is different. In fact, in case of the pole, the modulus of f z will always go to infinity when z approach to the singular pole z naught. But in case of the essential singularity, when z approach to z naught, the value of the function f z f of z may not uh, be definitely will not approach to a single limit, it will approach to different limit. And in fact, if I take any number any given a complex number, one can identify a path which approach to z naught such that limiting value of this function f z when z approach to z naught an essential singular point, it will lead to the same value which we desired except possibly one. So, the characterization of this singular point about in the neighborhood of the pole uh, and neighborhood of the singularity differs and that is given by in terms of the following result. The first the characterization characterization of uh, singularity uh, behavior or you can say behavior of the do not say behavior 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 of behavior of an analytic function, analytic function, behavior of analytic function in the neighborhood of pole and essential singularity. essential singularity. So, first we have behavior near a pole, behavior near a pole.
ठीक बिहेवियर नहीं आ रहे पॉल हाँ दी इट इज गिवन लाइक दिस इफ द फंक्शन एफ जेड इज एनालिटिक इज एनालिटिक एंड हेज एंड हेज इज एनालिटिक एंड हेज अ पॉल हेज अ पॉल एट जेड इक्वल टू जे नॉट हेज अ पॉल एट जेड इक्वल टू जे नॉट देन the absolute value of this modulus of f z will tends to infinity as z tends to z not as z tends to z not in any manner in any manner it means whatever the path you choose which approach to z not the absolute value of mod f z the modulus of f z will go to infinity that is the if z not is a pole for example if we look the function fz which is 1 by z square now it has a pole of order 2 at the point z equal to 0 now when you find the limit of this mod fz when z tends to 0 this is the 1 by modulus of z square limit z tends to 0 and that is nothing but what x square plus y square limit x tends to 0 and this we can establish by epsilon delta definition also or otherwise along any path you choose this limit will go to 0 this limit sorry this will go to infinity because z is x is tending to 0 by tending to 0 so this will go to infinity whatever the path you choose because it keeps on increasing for that okay so this goes to a z tends to similarly the behavior near an essential singular point near essential singular point essential singular point the function f z uh, this behavior is given by Picot's theorem. What is the Picot's theorem? Is the Picot's theorem says if the function f z is analytic and has an isolated essential singular point. singular points isolated singular point at a isolated singularity singular point say z equal to z naught means it has isolated singularity at z equal to z naught then it takes on every value it takes on every value takes on every value with at most with at most one exceptional exceptional value in an arbitrary small neighborhood of z naught arbitrarily small neighborhood of z naught. So, what this theorem says is Picot's theorem says if suppose z naught is an essential singularity for this function f z, then if I um, draw a neighborhood around this point okay, in an arbitrary small neighborhood of this point, the value of the function f z when z approaches to z naught will take any value all the value in fact except possibly 1. So, there will be one external value which may not be taken by the function when z approaches to z naught, but rest of the values can easily be achieved by choosing the suitable path which approach to z naught. For example, if we take the function f z e to the power 1 by z. Now, this function we have already seen that z equal to 0 is an essential singular point. Now, 
the limit of this function f z when z tends to 0. Now, if I take z to be i y then what happens to this? This is the limit e to the power i y means minus i square over i y is it not and that will be the limit by tends to 0 and once you take this what happens to this uh, i e to the power minus i over by limit by tends to 0. So, this will be equal to cosine of 1 by y minus i sin of 1 by y and limit by tends to 0. We know the limit of sin 1 by y or limit of this will not exist. So, it does not exist. However, if we choose the path this is path 1. If we take the path 2 z is equal to say x then what is the limit of this function f z when z tends to 0 it is e to the power 1 by x as x tends to 0. Now, this limit will go to if x is positive it will go to infinity if x is negative it will go to 0. So, along different path it has a different value. In fact, if I choose a function suppose I suppose I want this value c which is equal to say c naught e to the power alpha different from 0 then one can identify the path which approach to 0. So, that this way. So, suppose there e to the power 1 by z is suppose this value which is uh, c naught e to the power i alpha. So, if I compare it and find out the x and y we get from here is r square is 1 by l n c naught uh, square plus alpha square and theta comes out to be 10 inverse minus alpha over l n c naught. Now, what is alpha? Alpha is this amplitude. So, alpha can be written as alpha plus minus 2 n pi it makes no difference. So, r can be reduced to 0 it means along different values which is near by the 0 we can assume any value uh, with a suitable path. So, that gives the same. So, we are not going detail right now. Okay. The zeros of an analytic function and the definition which is required the zero of analytic function. A zero of an analytic function analytic function f z in a domain in a domain d is a point z equal to z naught in d such that such that f of z naught is 0. When the function vanishes at the point then the point is said to be the 0 of the analytic function. A 0 has an order n if not only f, but also the derivatives f prime z not only f z, but derivative f prime z f double prime z up to say f n minus 1 z vanishes uh, vanishes at 0 are all 0 at z naught are 0 at z naught. Uh, a 0 uh, all 0, but the nth derivative of this function is different from 0. Then we say z naught is a 0 of order n, then z naught is a 0 of order n for the function f z. Clear? So, this is also a concept which we require. Right. <coughs> now, let us come to our main thing which is useful the residue integration method. method. Actually, the purpose of the Cauchy residue integral method is to evaluate the integral 
f z d z along the path c along the path along a simple closed path simple closed path c lying in the domain lying in the domain d where the f is defined lying in domain d that is all ok. D. Now, the integral of this f z d z the two cases may be there if the function f each have if the function f z each analytic if the function f z is analytic everywhere everywhere on c and inside c and inside c such an in, then the value of this integral c f z d z will be 0 by Cauchy integral theorem. Okay. So, for evolution of such an integral is very easy just you have to identify whether the given function is analytic throughout the domain, domain contained inside c at every point inside c as well as on the boundary of the c. So, integration along the closed path will be 0. However, if the function f z if f z has a singularity has a singularity at a point singularity at a point z equal to z naught inside c inside 3, but but each otherwise analytic. It means z equal to z naught is an isolated singularity that is f has isolated singularity at z equal to z naught in the inside c and on c inside c. Okay. So, there is no other point except c naught and on c and on c. Then one can expand this function f z by means of the Lorentz series, then one can expand it by means of Lorentz series, Lorentz series and the series will be that is f z will be sigma n is 0 to infinity a n z minus z naught to the power n plus b 1 over z minus z naught plus b 2 over z minus z naught whole square and so on and so forth. And this series converges this series converges converges for all points near to z equal to z naught in the analysis in some domain in some domain of the form 0 less than z minus z naught less than say r. Okay. Now, <laughs> the in this case the coefficient a n b n etcetera as I told you earlier this was given by this formula uh, coefficients uh, yeah this was our formula for the a n and b n. So, if we look the uh, formula for the b 1 here the v 1 is given by the formula 1 by 2 pi i integral along c f z star or z star and then z star minus z naught minus 1 plus 1 d z star that is f b 1 becomes in uh, 1 by 2 pi i integral along the closed curve f z d z. This is our integral. So, from here can you say integral of the function f z d z along the curve c is 2 pi i times b 1 2 pi i times of b 1. It means if I know that the coefficient of 1 upon z minus z naught then one can easily evaluate the integral c uh, f z along the path c where 
the z naught is a point of singular point an isolated singular point for the function f z and this b 1 we call it as b 1 is known as. So, b 1 is a very important uh, role it plays an important role in evaluating the close uh, integral along a closed path which contains the singular point and so b 1 we call uh, gives a special name and the b 1 is known as the uh, residue as the residue of the function f z at z equal to z naught. Okay. So, we, get <coughs> we define the residue the coefficients the residue of the function f z means coefficient of that is residue of the function f z at an isolated singular point z naught is, is the coefficient of 1 over z minus z naught in the expansion of Lorentz series. So, this set 2 okay, run series 2. So, that is the one way. means by using this result we can easily get this. Uh, so, let it be say here 3. So, suppose I have uh, say uh, this one. So, suppose I wanted to evaluate this integral f z uh, sin z y z to the power 4 d z along the unit circle mod z equal to 1 in a counter clockwise direction clockwise. Now, obviously, this function sin z y z 4 this is equal to 1 by z 4 sin z expansion is uh, z minus z cube over factorial 3 plus z 5 by factorial 5 and so on. So, when you divide by this you are getting is 1 by z cube minus 1 by factorial 3 into 1 by z plus z over factorial 5 and so on so forth. So, this is the expansion of the function sin z by z to the power 4 around the point 0 obviously, z equal to 0 is an isolated singular point. singular point is an isolated singular point and then it is of course, a pole of order 3. Then what is our residue coefficients b 1 here comes out to be minus 1 by factorial 3 that is the residue of the function f z at the point z equal to 0. So, if you are interested in this value then we can get integral of this function uh, sin z over mod uh, over z to the power 4 d z along a curve mod z equal to 1 which encloses z equal to 0 as an isolated singular point is nothing but y theorem 2 pi i times into b 1 b 1 is minus 1 by root 3 uh, 1 by factorial 3 sorry 1 by factorial 3 and that comes out to be that comes out to be uh, say uh, minus pi i by 3. Here obviously, this result is valid when mod z is greater than 0, okay? mod z greater than 0. So, it is an analysis like that. So, this way we can easily answer the questions for computing the integral for this. Now, the residue which we are calling as a coefficient of this, then this is not only way to compute the residue that is by expanding the function in the form of the Lorentz series and then try to find the coefficients of the 1 by z minus z naught and the say this is the residue of the function. Since the Lorentz series expansion of any function does not depend uh, does uh, can not only be uh, obtained with the help of the formula, we can also use many tricks in many ways we can expand the function around the point z naught and get the Lorentz series expansion and this expansion is unique. So, you are free to expand the function around the point z naught and get the Lorentz series expansion 
by either by using the formula this is a coefficient formula a and b s or with some other method as we have discussed earlier. The main idea is once you expand you find the b 1, but since the expansion when you expand the function f z in the form of Lorentz series either with the help of the formula or with the help of some other way it requires time and to evaluate the integral along the closed path f z does not need the expansion at all of the function f z in the form of Lorentz series. What does it need is the coefficient of 1 upon z minus z naught that is the residue of the function at a single point z equal to z naught. So, instead of going for the expansion if I know some formula which directly gives the residue of the function at the point z naught then it is very easy to compute the residue and then find out the value of the integral. So, let us see the residue <coughs> certain formula to find the residue to find residue okay, to find the residue at a, an isolated single point at a single point single point z equal to z naught. Okay. So, I will give you different cases case 1 if z naught is a pole suppose z naught is a pole of order 1 pole of order 1 means that is a simple pole simple pole means only the function value f of z naught is 0, but f prime z naught is not 0. So, if it is a pole of order 1 then the Lorentz series expansion will involve only the one term the negative portion and uh, principal part will involve only one term and rest term will be having the positive integral power of z minus. So, we can write down the expansion f z which may be which will be in the form of b 1 z minus z naught plus a naught plus a 1 z minus z naught plus a 2 z minus z naught of square and so on so forth. Here b 1 will be different here b 1 cannot be 0 because if b 1 is 0 then z naught will not be a simple pole. Okay. So, because it is simple b 1 will be different from 0. So, now you multiply by function f z by z minus z naught and take the limit at z approaches to z naught. What you get? The other term get cancel uh, tends to 0 in fact, it will be 0 and we get only b 1. So, that is the residue of the function f z at simple pole, simple pole z naught. So, this is the formula for this. Okay. That is the residue of the function f z at z equal to z naught which is a simple pole will be equal to limit of the function z tends to z naught z minus z naught f z. So, this will be the formula. Okay. This now, suppose uh, for example, let us take uh, if I take the function f z say 9 z plus i over say z z square plus 1. Now, what are the singular point? Here if I look the z equal to plus minus i will be the singular point z equal to 0 will also be singular point. So, z equal to plus minus i 0 these are the singular points. Okay. So, I want the residue of the function f z at the point z equal to say i. So, what is this is you just multiply by z my minus i the whole thing 9 z plus i divide by z and z square plus 1 can be written as z minus i z plus i and take the limit at z tends to i. So, if we compute this value the value will come out to be minus 5 i that is the residue of the function at z e. Similarly, residue at minus i and 0 can be obtained quickly. Okay. Now, if it is a pole another method is another rule or is since if suppose the function f z is of the form p z by q z where z naught is a simple pole. Then obviously, when z naught is a simple pole the function q z must have a one of the uh, uh, factor z minus z naught involved. 
So, q z will have this. So, q z will have the expansion as z minus z naught into q prime z naught because when z approach to z naught q z naught must go to 0 plus z minus z naught whole square y factorial to q double prime z naught and so on. So, and also we have assumed that a p of z p z naught is not 0, we are p of z naught is not 0, okay. otherwise it will go the identity function 0 function. Okay. So, residue of f z at z equal to z naught, you can just divide and take the limit multiply by this, we will get p z by q z and limit z tends to z naught and what you get immediately this will come out to be the p z naught over q prime z naught. So, that is another formula to compute the residue at a sim pole, simple pole, but if the sketch second if our z naught is a pole of order m is a pole of order m then the corresponding formula I am not driving that result the corresponding formula for the residue of the function f z when z equal to z naught is a pole of order m then this formula will be 1 by factorial m minus 1 limit z tends to z naught derivative m minus 1 a derivative of this term d m uh, minus 1 over d z m of the term z minus z naught of the function z minus z naught to the power m f z this. So, limit of this that will give the residue of the function when m is a pole. So, um, for just I, I will take one example and then come to our say uh, for example, if we take the function f z which is say uh, our 50 z over z plus 4 z minus i whole square. Suppose I take obviously, z equal to i is a pole a simple pole of order 2 of order 2. Okay, this is a second order. So, what is the residue of this function f z at z is equal to i uh, m is 2. So, it is 1 over factorial m minus 1 becomes 1. The here m is 2. So, derivative d by d z of this. So, simply it is the limit z tends to i d by d z and then z minus z naught z naught is i. So, it is i z minus i m is 2 f of z f of z is 50 z over z plus 4 z minus i whole square and then take the. So, first you this will cancel and then differentiate it after differentiating and substituting the value you will get the answer is it. So, that way we can find. Okay. So, <coughs> if the function is given and it is asked to find the residue it is easy to either apply this one or this. One. Hence, if a integral of the f z is required along the path c along a closed curve c which encloses the point z naught as a singular point, then one can easily find out the value of this as 2 pi i into b 1 as we have discussed earlier. However, if this curve c encloses more than one points, where the function is not defined or function has a singular t at more than one point, then in that case uh, this formula will not help much. It means everywhere first we have to identify the region where the function is analytic, apply the Cauchy's theorem to find out the integrals and then only we can get the something about the value of this integral. So, the case is uh, given by the residue theorem and this result is given by residue theorem. This is known as the residue theorem. What this residue theorem says? Let f be analytic, f z v analytic inside a simple inside a simple closed path closed path c and on c except 
except for finitely many for finitely many singular points finitely many singular points z 1 z 2 z k inside c then the integral integral of the function f z taking counter clockwise clockwise direction around c around around c counter clockwise along the c equals 2 pi i times 2 pi i times the sum of the residue residue of f z at this point z 1 z 2 z k. That is the meaning is this that integral of the function f z along the path c where c is a closed curve where the function is analytic everywhere except possibly these k points which has a singular point. Then the value of this integral will be 2 pi i times sum of the residue sigma j equal to 1 to k residue of the function f z at z equal to z j. The proof is very simple what we do is we replace this uh, remove this z 1 z 2 z n by means uh, enclose this z 1 z 2 z n by a circle and let the direction of this be suppose clockwise clockwise ok. Then if I go along the path c then what happens that when you move along this curve along this direction and then come back again this direction like this. So, what we get it we are getting a region we are getting a region where the function is analytic. So, integral of this curve c outer boundary plus this integral must be 0, but here the integration is taken in the clockwise here it is in the anti clockwise. So, we get from here is that integral of the function f z along the outer boundary will be the sum of the integral of the function f z d z along the inner boundary say c 1 c 2 c k this is the sum k equal to 1 to uh, say uh, j equal to 1 to m k. Now, this each integral is taken along a curve which contains only one singular point. Hence, by the previous result the integral of the function f z along uh, a curve c which encloses only single point is 2 pi i times the residue of the function at this point. So, this is equal to sigma j equal to 1 to k and uh, uh, 1 to k residue of the function f z at z is equal to z j z j and 2 pi i. So, this proves the results. Okay. So, just one example I will just give and then finish it. Suppose I take this integral 4 minus 3 z over z square minus z d z. Suppose this integral along the path c, where c is such which encloses the point 0, 0, 1 and so. If we look the function f z, 4 minus 3 z over z, z minus 1, it has a singularity z 0 and 1. These are the two singular point at this, z equal to 0 and z equal to 1, both are the simple pole only. Suppose the c encloses both the point 0 and 1, then the value of this integral will be 2 pi i times the sum of the residue at the residue at z equal to 0 plus residue at z equal to 1. If it encloses only one point and one is outside then the value will be equal to 2 pi i times residue at z is 0 1 is here and third case suppose it uh, both the point 0 and 1 is outside then integral along this curve will be 0 because the function becomes analytic. So, only thing is you have to compute the residue at 0 and 1 and residue at 0 means multiply this by z and take the limit z tends to 0 you can find the residue at 0 
when z is 1 multiply by z minus 1 take the limit at z tends to 1 you get the residue of then hence we get that. So, what we conclude that the integral when you find the integral of the function along a closed path we have to see that the function f z what are the singular point of the function and whether they lie where they lie if they lie inside then accordingly the formula will be there if lies outside accordingly the value will come or one lies inside one lies outside then also accordingly means every in all the cases we are able to apply the residue theorem to get the value of the integral thank you very much thanks